Hey guys, uh, we we did um, challenge ten, and it's presented by the Wobbly Tables. Um, the reason is because our table was wobbly, um, so the name the name goes with it. Who we are? So we've got Tom, hand up, uh, portfolio management consultant. We've got Becky, PMO analyst. We've got Vilia, data portfolio manager. Myself, Marcus, portfolio manager, and you last the data scientist. So lots of project people here, but also we needed the uh, the data scientists for for obvious reasons. Um, so what is our problem? By using machine learning, how can we identify problem projects early and ensure future projects deliver the expected outcomes on time, on budget? So that was really our focus. We were using Oxford data to make sure that we could uh, get that information as, uh, to actually do machine learning as well. And why is this required? What we actually identified through the data is the current risk on what we classified as risky projects were projects that were over budget and over time on schedule. They were reporting 34% of the time green, 37% of the time amber, and 29% of the time red. So what you can see by that is project status reporting, which most PMOs love and read all the time, are actually incorrect most of the time. So that was interesting there. So we must be able to find a better way using the data that we have inside these all these project management systems to get the information that we have um, to obviously eliminate delivery risk to the portfolios. Um, so how did we do it? So we got a hell of a lot of project data um, using lots of different things. We've got it into the ETL. This isn't built yet, the ETL. Into the DeLorean project machine so we can tell the future. It's using multiple data sources, over thousands of rows of data, hundreds of thousands of rows of data that will allow us to do reporting, analytics, and obviously save money for the business. The reason it's going to do this in the future, and now all these kind of features are future proof is agnostic of inputs and outputs. So we're going to be able to do it over multiple inputs. Not so an example of that in the data they had um, they had bureau information. So if that bureau information didn't exist in a different business, we could do it on cost center information, or we could do it on different things. So how to would be allowed allowed allowable to customize depending on the business that we actually are serving. Um, enabled not only predictive decision, but also able to analyze and report on data. So while we were only tasked with doing predictive on decisioning using machine learning, we had to build a data model anyway, so why not use it to do deep analytics as well, as well as reporting as well. Software can be used on one project or a portfolio of projects, and it's intuitive to use for all parties. The next, the next thing is seeing it in action. So what we're able to do is build uh, I'm not going to say we built, Ulash built, um, a, a data model using machine learning to predict um, quite, quite a few things. We've got a high success rate model in predicting risky projects using gradient boosted trees. I'm not sure what that means. Um, and we did a proof of concept focusing on cost variance. Um, the reason is just because we wanted to narrow our scope. However, what we want to do in the future is increase that to schedule variances and things like that. And that's where we've got our next steps in there is to build out this model um, to incorporate cost as well as schedule, build front end to include all importing data to allow commercialization, create agnostic software inputs can, where inputs can be captured based on specific company data points. And even while we were listening to all these, Ulash has been working to build up custom measures and things like that to, to go where are the less risky projects, so maybe we can set up projects in a, in a different way to, to enable success. So the commercial benefits of this, um, and, and I've done it on, a, on two, two um, aspects, is the pro how can this help project data analytics as a consultant, but also how can it help the customer. So it's easy to implement. So what that means is you can get the data and very quickly turn that data around to be very predictive for the portfolios. It's a quick engagement. You can do all this in two weeks. How good would it be to get a $50,000 engagement with exciting kind of outputs that that someone has never seen before. It's a point of difference. How many, how many project management consultants and portfolio management consultants who use predictive learning or machine technology to actually predict when projects will go off track? Not many. And, the, and you can also prove the benefits of data, which, which basically means that by using this data, you can show that projects will go off track, so you can kind of prove out your kind of methodology that data and analytics in project environments is, is a really good experience. Now, from a customer or client perspective, you can use, um, it challenges optimism by this, so when projects come in and put in a, a forecast or something, you can go, well, based on the data and previous projects, that's a lot of uh, cod swallop. So you can kind of put, uh, so you can kind of challenge that. It's a quick engagement, so that benefits both the parties. It's also proactive assurance. Most PMOs aren't proactive. They're very la using lagging indicators, like project status reports, or using 
actuals versus forecast where, where actuals have already landed. Hindsight's a foresight, so that, that's obviously a key one. And targeted support, and what we mean by that is you can actually target support of the impacted areas. So say for example, you find out that this particular portfolio is, is a problem child. Rather than focusing on everybody, go work with them for a couple of months, uplift the capability, get them tracking properly, and then hopefully rather than dealing with the, the masses, you can deal with the critical few and obviously provide targeted support. And that's, I think, a couple of minutes to spare. I'm optimistic, but if there's any questions, uh, <laughs> let me know.